Hey. Yeah, actually, this link uh, I haven't shared to anyone yet. So if you guys already have subscribed to this channel, you would have got notification, right? Once if you see this notification, please share this link to your friends so that everyone would join. So today uh, we're going to discuss about uh, environmental issues. Morning uh, session we had in one uh, very rapid uh, kind of an outline session. So this is brief, briefing the entire chapter, every aspect would be touched, right? So this is uh, something like a brief uh, account of the entire chapter within one or one and a half hour. And then there would be a next type of video that is full length chapter. That is, the entire chapter will be dealt in detail, just like classroom setup, part by part, topic by topic. So it will come as uh, part one, part two, part three, part four. So which will be very detailed. So these are the two types of videos you will find for every lesson of 11th and 12th biology, CBS. Once we complete the CBSC 38 chapters, we will uh, we'll start the metric and ICSE syllabus as well. So, okay. So we'll wait one more minute and we'll start. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Prithika, please share this link to your friends. Let them come. Ask them to share to other classmates, tall standard classmates. I mean, this present world standard, not outgoing batch. Okay. So, this lesson, uh, environmental issues, which is the last lesson of uh, uh, 12th standard biology. Right. So we'll have we will touch every aspect of this uh, lesson briefly. So I'm just waiting for others to join. Got three four members out there, but still, Sai, come on. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, Sai. Okay. Okay then. Fine then, we will start the class. So whoever, you know, this link can be shared later so that uh, whoever not having this uh, live notifications on, they may not be, uh, you know, uh, notified about this live class. And I haven't shared this link as well. So please do share this link to your friends uh, so that uh, they can uh, they can join into the class. Within uh, within a minute we will start the class.
Okay. Okay, fine. So let's let's start with uh, uh, yeah. Let's start with the you know lesson and uh, let me uh, make sure that you share you share this link to your friends so that they will also join. Okay. From next next uh, video onwards, from the from tomorrow onwards, uh, I will share the link and uh, you guys also can share the link. Okay. So let's start with this lesson. So, morning uh, we discussed in the other video, we, uh, the other uh, quick recap or quick uh, outline of the this chapter was dealt morning session. That video is already available in, uh, you know, uh, a quick go through playlist, right? So, this, this video will be available in brief, uh, uh, you know, brief discussion on individual chapter that is a playlist okay so when we talk about environmental issues first what we have to consider is or first what we need to understand is the term pollution okay so a pollution is anything which is undesirable change in its physical chemical or biological characteristics of air land water or soil so these are the four aspects where if there is any physical change or chemical change or biological characteristics for example uh, if the air is contaminated by microorganisms right uh, few few diseases mode of transmission is through air few are through droplets respiratory droplets if you, if you consider covid 19 something which is respiratory droplets not not through air but it's through respiratory droplets that's why we maintain distancing Okay. Likewise, the air can be contaminated based upon uh, some, uh, you know, viruses, microorganisms, or might be chemicals. And the physical nature of this water or soil may also alter, which actually, actually, we we uh, we you know we use this term pollution to describe these aspects in air, land, water, or soil. Right. So why why we are uh, much concerned about this uh, pollution? Because you see the uh, no pollution, right? Pollution is something uh, of uh, sort of different varieties of pollutants or the right which pollute air, which pollute water, right? Which pollute uh, no uh, what do you say? Uh, what do you can see? Uh, soil etc why this pollution is actually increasing day by day because human population explosion so the human population is ex you know exploding in such a way that the numbers are growing in alarming rates right so there is a demand for food water home electricity and automobiles etc that actually leading to the pollution right for example uh, no, right now I'm sitting here. I have an electronic appliance, two mobiles, one laptop, and a tab over there, and I, of course, no AC. But still, there are other electronic gadgets. We, I have almost many different varieties of gadgets we have. If a person can hold five different electronic gadgets, right? So think about the entire uh, human population. At the same time, when we talk about development, right, and uh, Due to the increase in population, also there will be an increase in competition. At the same time, we need to uh, meet the demands of this food, water, home, electricity, and other automobiles, right? So, to meet the demand, we need to supply. It means the demand and supply chain will be there, right? So, demand and supply chain, we need to meet these demands by supplying, right? So, to supply. Uh, you know automobile industries so when we need this demands to, to supply uh, for this uh, you know ever increasing demands right we are uh, trying to find out ways to you know create some products to create products 
right? And then those byproducts and waste products will be leading to pollution. So this is how the pollution is connected to human explosion, human population explosion, right? So you can't directly just take out the pollution right from the environment because it's so connected to us. People will say that, okay, let's protect the environment and they post everything on social media, but they use mobiles. And to manufacture mobile, we need to have industries, right? Different companies, industries to set up and then uh, e-waste also will be produced. A lot of e-waste will be produced, right? So really to uh, you know, conserve the environment or really protect the environment, what as a human part of nature, what we have is in our hands is, is to control this pollution. We can't directly stop pollution right it's near impossible but we can use some control measures we can really cut down our intentional damage that we do to environment right so likewise this is the pollution uh, you know when it comes to de uh, definition of the pollution at the same time uh, we have got different acts that is environmental acts environment uh, protection act 1986 which they give you know, some measures, right? Or this bill is passed to control environmental pollution, protect and improve the quality of our environment when we talk about India, right? So now we will uh, uh, go talk about the, you know, different aspects of the pollutions, like we told, right? Air, land, water, soil, etc. So what are the different uh, pollutants we can see in uh, different, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, different aspects like air, uh, land, water, or soil. So now, now let's start with air pollution. So this is this discussion is based upon academics uh, and meet CBSC, you know, twelfth standard biology. Okay, if you have books, you can uh, refer right now, right? So I'll, uh, so the next one, in the next aspect is what we're gonna take is air pollution. And it's controlled, right? Air pollution, and how can we really control? So, to understand what is air pollution, you should know that causes of air pollution. So, what are the constituents of air for, for that matter? Okay, so if you see this uh, causes of air pollution, is something which is particulate and gaseous air pollutants from right uh, thermal power plants and smelters, different. You know different sources we get this air pollutants right so according to the central pollution control board cpcb right particulate size of less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter we say pm 2.5 causes the greatest greatest harm to the human health so here what we are defining is in this pollution chapter we need to understand the pollutants where does this pollutants are present and uh, in uh, we, every pollutant will have a permissible limit when it crosses that limit right what happens is that it, it turns to be hazardous to the human so we are talking about human welfare obviously right this conscious consciousness which is put in our brains we uh, we always tend to protect humans of course so we are talking about uh, we are talking about uh, this environmental uh, permissible uh, limit with respect to human health, right? And then uh, pollutants from automobiles also causes air pollution. So what are the effects of harm, uh, harmful, you know, what are the effects, harmful effects of the air pollutants? So already, you know, you would have uh, uh, reading about this air pollution since your sixth, uh, sixth or environmental studies from fifth or sixth standard, right? Uh, you're, uh, you're very well known about uh, this harmful effects of air pollution like uh, respiratory problems, irritation, inflammations, right? Allergic reactions may cause by this air pollutants. So what, how can we really even, um, even it causes uh, premature deaths of the plants because of this pollution. So how can we really control this air pollution? We can control this air pollution by using separate filters so that, that it can filter the particulate matter before even releasing into the environment or atmosphere. Right. 
So uh, even we can use uh, you know uh, what do you say catalytic converters. So we use this convert catalytic converters to convert this uh, 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 particulate matter, particulates, right, pollutants to less harmful uh, substances. At the same time, phasing out the old vehicles. So old vehicles, you know, we will develop some kind of an uh, you know, attachment to the old vehicles and other products and we use them uh, over uh, generations after generations, which really, uh, you know, deterrent to the environment. So whenever there is a, whenever uh, there was a, a life given to a particular automobile, it has to be phased out. It means it has to, it has to, it's, it has to be restructured its uses, right? So that it will incompletely combu uh, combu uh, you know, combustion takes place in the fuel and it releases more pollutants. At the same time, uh, uh, we, we have to, uh, you know, uh, for example, we can use the CNG instead of uh, fossil fuels, we can use the CNG for the public transport, right? So, what is CNG? It is a compressed natural gas, CNG, right? And when you see in India, right now, Delhi, uh, in Delhi, public transport, uh, they are using this uh, CNG, compressed uh, natural gas. So, there are some advantages and disadvantages of the CNG as well, right? So, uh, these are the measures we can really take up, right, uh, uh, to really protect, uh, protect our environment from these pollutants. Right, when it comes to air pollution and even we can use electrostatic precipitators what are electrostatic precipitators is not they are nothing but a device devices which remove particulate matter okay so the particulate matter which will be released into the environment would be removed by this electrostatic precipitators right so it can remove over 99 percent particulate matter present in the exhaust from a thermal power plant, power plant. So if you see this uh, thermal power plants, uh, you know, they, they'll be having exhausts, right? So from that exhaust, almost 99% uh, particulate matter can be removed. So that's what we use is electrostatic precipita uh, precipitators to reduce the pollution in the air. So we'll go much details of this lesson when I take this uh, in the next type of video that is a detailed discussion. So let's move on. Right, I'll be, uh, when you see this, uh, uh, the other, other pollution we talk about is noise pollution and it's prevention acts we need to remember when we talk about this academics or need, right? And then uh, noise, when we say, uh, uh, when we say, sound as a noise right when there is an undesirable high level of sound we call it as noise right and it's decibels for example 150 dbs when it is process 150 dbs right uh, uh, you know uh, the sound level above 150 dbs can damage our eardrum so we, we put this uh, in that noise category so how do we, how do we really control this noise pollution uh, for example, use of sound uh, absorbent materials in industries, right? Delimitation of foreign uh, free zones around, uh, like for example, we need to limit the usage of the horns uh, uh, when it comes to you know hospitals and schools, which would be too much noisy when uh, someone honks at the hospital or the schools, and like that, we need to prevent this honking at particular uh, uh, places, right? And even delimit, or we have to reduce the uh, usage uh, of uh, loudspeakers also the timings right early early in the morning at the same time late in the night would really create a hectic uh, a lot of noise by using loudspeakers right and then uh, uh, this is the this is uh, uh, this is about the air pollution sweta Good afternoon, sports of good afternoon, Sweta Kannan. Yeah. So from next time onwards, I will be sharing this link uh, in different platforms so that uh, whoever available, they can join. Even now you can, uh, after the live has end, right, you can you, uh, you can re, uh, see this uh, video again also, 
that's not an issue okay so next we will talk about water uh, pollution and its control so when we talk about water pollution more uh, uh, many, many people will not focus on this as aspect that is domestic sewage right everyone will talk about uh, industrial effluents uh, etc but the domestic sewage also can be a potential pollutant when it is not treated right uh, we will be talking in uh, microbes in human welfare right in that we have a sewage treatment plants uh, the primary treatment secondary treatment etc and uh, secondary treatment involves biological treatment which reduces the bod so the pollutants would be you know the, when they are released into the water bodies they will be less polluted so the even the domestic waste has to be treated properly and then industrial effluents so if you see this uh, almost uh, impurities if there are any impurities in the you know potable water they are not fit for uh, consumption uh, fit for consumption and uh, you know uh, what are they include actually uh, what are the substances or particles which actually uh, when they are present in the water right so what are the different uh, substances we can uh, or what are the types of uh, you know materials that may present in uh, water and which contaminated or which are which is not fit for consumption for example suspended solids suspended solids like sand slip clay etc if they are they are uh, above the permissible limit or if they are contaminated in the water they are not fit for consumption right they are said to be polluted colloidal materials like uh, fish, uh, fecal matter for that matter fecal matter or human excreta or any excreta right and then bacteria cloth paper fibers etc these are all you know uh, uh, these are all colloidal uh, matter which you know which uh, when they increase in this water they form this pollutants and then dissolved materials which dissolves within this uh, water itself like nutrients like uh, nitrate ammonia sulf uh, phosphates sodium calcium etc which will be dissolved uh, you know and then pollute the water so how do we really handle this actually so how do we measure this pollutants so we measure uh, you know we we estimate you know we estimate this organic matter for example uh, domestic waste if you take it contains more more of an you know biodegradable uh, organic matter so it can be decomposed by the microorganisms so that's why we use sewage treatment plant stps uh, stps and the primary and secondary treatments we reduce this biochemical oxygen demand right so it, because it is biodegradable waste right and then when we talk about this uh, biological aspects as an pollutants in the sense water hy hyacinth right this water hyacinth which is iconia iconia species which is called as terror of bengal because uh, you know uh, it just grown abundantly right so it, it's a weed plant and then it's grown abundantly and covered almost the entire uh, water bodies so when the entire water body is covered by this water hy hyacinth what happens is that the below uh, if the hyacinth is like this right so imagine this is water and this is hyacinth and the below organisms aquatic organisms you know and uh, other uh, fish fishes they they uh, they have a competition to get the oxygen and the light and they eventually get so that's what we call it as terror of bengal and then next aspect is biomagnification so what is biomagnification so when we talk about food chain right so when we talk about food chain one eats one in the sense like one trophic level to other trophic level the components would uh, go into the food chain energy biomass etc in the same way when we consume right if, for example if you are uh, you know uh, polluting a water body for example uh, mercury or ddt right ddt fertilizer whatever right you uh, you uh, you contaminate the ground water table or any water body thinking that it's not harming you think again because Uh, when we release this pollutants into chemical pollutants into water so they uh, this will be mixed with the water and then successfully it would be 
entered into the food chain trophic layer for example it might be consumed by small organisms right and then that those will be consumed by the you know fish or different types of fish right and when we you know uh, catch the fish fish right and then uh, when we cook and eat these particles pollutants or metals would be entering into our system from one trophic level to other trophic level to other trophic level so likewise the food chain it enters this pollution uh, polluting uh, or toxic toxic materials will be entering into the food chain right so this is called biomagnification if you take the biomagnification of ddt or are, uh, are you guys following kadir yeah graphin kadir uh, please share this link to your friends as well so let them join so if you see this ddt yeah this ddt which is uh, uh, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane right so this ddt uh, in short we use uh, as ddt which is a colorless tasteless right even uh, odorless right which is which is a crystalline chemical compound right so how how do actually uh, this ddt uh, biomagnification occur right so if you see this uh, ddt will be you know uh, even now i guess like they they use uh, you know they used to actually uh, kill this uh, you know larvae in the water actually water bodies so when they spray this ddt they intervene with the life uh, you know life cycles of the malarial parasites right or vectors larvae so this eventually when we spray ddt you know this ddt is uh, with this characteristics it enters into the food chain it it will be uh, you know it will cause uh, more damage to the one who is consuming so likewise under this biomagnification right so it uh, first it is enters into the water and then from water to zooplankton So which consumes, you uh, know, which are zooplankton, and the zooplankton is consumed by small fish. Small fish is consumed by large fish, and the large fish is consumed by birds or any other organism. The next trophic level. In this way, the biomagnification works. It means the pollution pollutants are keep moving the trophic levels. So this is one type of pollution. And the next aspect is eutrophication. What is eutrophication? it is like eutrophication is nothing but uh, aging of a lake by nutrient enrichment so eutrophication is something the uh, amount of nutrients present in that lake would be too much abundant right so abundant right in a young lakes the the texture you know the characteristics of the lake would be very different from an old lake so when the old lake is getting old what happens is you know they accumulate lot of uh, nutrients right and eventually increase its fertility lake fertility so what happens if, if that is the scenario plants and animals grow rapidly and even organic uh, if you see this organic uh, remains or deposit on the lake of the bottom you know uh, bottom of the lake this all uh, organic matter will be deposited right so this this kind, this type of uh, you know uh, condition would lead that lake to be warmer right so once depending upon this uh, climax eventually what happens is uh, you know out of uh, you know span of few years thousands of years however this you know this uh, nutrients enrichment of this uh, you know nutrient enrichment in this water bodies would eventually accelerate the eutrophication means the you know the growth of this uh, plants and animals right yeah you guys are following right yeah 
So if you see this eutrophication, the prime contaminants, so important contaminants are nitrates and phosphates. So they over stimulate the growth of the algae. So this algae would keep on growing, 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 right? So it, it causes you know, scum and unpleasant odors also, right? And what happens is there would be a huge demand of demand on the dissolved oxygen. So when there is a demand in the dissolved oxygen in these lakes, like what happens is the, the other organisms which are living and which are unable to meet their oxygen you know, demand and supply, they will eventually die. So this is how the eutrophication works. So to really address this issue, we have to go for some control measures. What are the different control measures we can use? That is nothing but integrated water, uh, uh, wastewater treatments, right? For example, uh, there is uh, it includes both artificial and natural processes, right? So we, we uh, you know, uh, for example, we can uh, we can use some innovative approaches like sedimentation, filtration, and chlorine treatments, right? And then we can even uh, use this, uh, what is a, uh, so by using different plants and algae, fungi, bacteria, right, were seeded into that particular area, which, which actually neutralized this pollution, right? Because they absorb and assimilate, they utilize this pollutants. You would have heard about the superbugs and you would have heard about the plastic eat, plastic eating bacteria like that, right? We can create genetically modified uh, organisms to even uh, address the pollutant uh, uh, pollutants as well when it comes to water. So likewise, we can go with the conventional or we can go with uh, some uh, innovative approaches, right? And then if you see in India, we have uh, got this uh, water, water, right, water act 1974, that is, which is prevention and control of the pollution, right? The government has passed this bill, right? And which, which safeguards the water resources. So what we have to see is it's uh, hygienic and efficient and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, efficient, uh, efficient way we need to address the pollutants present in the water. For example, human excreta, excreta have to be recycled, right, as a uh, natural fertilizer, so that it, it it reduces the need for even chemical fertilizer. So likewise, we need to create some, we have to come up with some uh, innovative approach to address the issues. And then coming to the waste and their effects, right, we have different types of waste. For example, Yeah, so let's move to the next aspect that is now we are talking about waste and their effects. So we have got different waste, type of waste, uh, for example, solid waste we have, right? And then we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, radioactive wastes, right? So when we talk about this solid waste, in the solid waste, solid waste is nothing but uh, this waste or refer to everything that goes out in trash. So whatever we, you know, we use and we throw it in trash comes under this solid waste and even we have um, uh, municipal solid waste as well. We have uh, sanitary landfills, right? So how to really manage this, uh, you know, solid waste? So we create some landfills and then why the land landfills has got limitations. For example, if you see this municipal solid waste, what are all this? This waste, which are uh, came from homes, offices, stores, schools, hospitals, etc., which are collected and disposed by the municipality, right? All this solid waste cannot be completely burnt. So usually we burn, right? We grade it and then we burn it, right? So what we do is open dumps. We will just dump them, right? But if we dump in that way, what happens is it's, it would be a breed, breeding ground for uh, you know, uh, rats and flies. It would definitely hamper the health of the humans and our organs. 
So we don't even uh, go for the open dump. So that's what we use is sanitary landfills or something which is substitute for open burning and uh, open burning dumps. In the sanitary landfills, waste are dumped in depression or trench and covered with drip. So there will be drench, there will be, you know, that's what landfills. The, you know, within this, uh, uh, what do you say, deep, uh, uh, you know, uh, deep depressions or trenches, this waste will be filled and then that will be covered with the dirt. So this is uh, this is how the sanitary landfills work. So that we no need to burn them at the same time. We no need to openly leave it. So what are the limitations of this landfill? So amount of garbage, especially in metros, has increased. So pollution is increased, and the usage, uh, single usage per head, right? Uh, the waste what we produce per capita, right? It would be keep on increasing because for pol population increasing. So it is, we can't really find those uh, that much of land to really handle this uh, solid waste. And the next one is, solid waste are actually of three types. One is biodegradable, non-biodegradable and recyclable. So in the name itself, it is suggestive that it can be degraded by biological organisms. Heavy metals from industrial waste. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I didn't follow this chart today, actually. Takes a little time to you know, adjust to this uh, new type of classes. Okay. So when you uh, when you see this types of uh, solid waste, right? What we have is biodegradable, non-biodegradable and recyclable. So we uh, I already gave the material uh, for the NEET students. It is already available in uh, uh, even in website also, you can get get from a uh, uh, website that I already posted morning, right? There also you can get uh, you can get the material. So moving on, biodegradable wastes or solid waste which undergo natural break breakdown. So at for the time uh, at some uh, given point of time they degrade, right? They decompose, right? naturally they break uh, break down into simpler you know inorganic compounds and then non biodegradable or like plastic packets polybin bags polyesters which which uh, which uh, which cannot be degradable right which cannot be degradable degradable by you know organisms so even we have that's why we go for this eco friendly packaging right instead of uh, using this plastics we can use this jute jute fibers uh, fiber bags clothing material, uh, natural fiber, etc. So recyclable is that plastic and e-waste. So we need to recycle this e-waste. And then when it comes to hospital waste, which is which has to be, you know, they contain disinfectants, harmful chemicals and pathogenic organisms. They are biohazardous waste, right? So they have to be incriminated, uh, you know, uh, incinerated. It means they have to be burnt, right? And then e-waste, when it comes to electronic e-waste, right, they are buried in landfills or incinerated. So they, they will be incinerated or they will be buried in landfills. So one half of the e-waste in developed countries are ex, uh, exported to develop uh, developing countries. So this e-waste is actually exported to developing countries like China, India, Pakistan, etc., where many metals or recovered during recycling process. So they uh, here uh, developing countries are actually recycling or reusing those uh, e-waste and during that recycling process we get a lot of metals from it. Right, uh, gold particles, we get uh, copper, you know, iron, uh, different metals we can get. So when we talk about this, uh, you know, uh, solid waste, Right. So there is a you know a remedy for plastic waste. So Ahmad Khan. So I gave it in material. So Ahmad Khan. Uh, you know he, he is actually a plastic sack manufacturer in Bangalore. Develop poly blend. So here this is something we we are we are using an alternative for the plastic. So this poly blend. It is a fine powder of recycled or modified plastic. So this poly blend is mixed with 
you know butamine and is used to lay roads now this waste is used to lay the roads so that we are actually recycling it for a better purpose right so and then comes to agrochemical and their uh, effects for example agrochemicals are nothing but uh, we use we use uh, uh, chemicals like uh, fertilizers within this chemical fertilizers within the i uh, know agricultural lands and uh, you know how they actually degrade and pollute this water so and then even this fertilizers which go and uh, you know you know leach into the soils and then goes into groundwater table and uh, you know eventually or uh, due to the soil erosion they mix up with lakes eventually causes even eutrophication because of this uh, rich in this nutrients right and that's why we actually suggesting the uh, farmers right now to you know go with integrated organic farming so this integrated organic farming approach would really you know uh, uh you know useful manage uh, management uh, you know uh, useful for uh, reducing the pollution right yeah and then coming to the next aspect is uh, by uh, you know radioactive waste so radioactive waste like uh, nuclear you know this use of uh, you know we use this nuclear energy right so this nuclear energy usage has got uh, serious problems so when we when we talk about uh, uh, issues with this nuclear power plants we have chernobyl in, uh, incident it is there in even uh, youtube and uh, we have got even a documentary on that uh, chernobyl incident right it means accidental leakage of this uh, you know radioactive waste and the other one is safe disposal of radioactive waste so when we talk about this nuclear radiation which this nuclear radiation cause mutations so in previous genetics lesson we already talked about mutation sudden change in dna sequence because of mutagens or uh, other uh, aspects like uh, random uh, events right the so mutagens it can cause a mutation uh, because uh, you know it alters the dna sequence so even it leads to cancer so that's what this radioactive waste needs to be actually become you know this disposed in a uh, safer manner so how do they do it is it is recommended to store nuclear waste in uh, shielded containers the container needs to be sealed and buried within the rocks about 500 meters half a kilometer 500 kilometers below the earth surface so that's how we actually dealing with the nuclear waste or this radioactive waste right so now let's come to the gaseous waste that is uh, you know uh, for example pollutants when we talk about greenhouse uh, effect and global warming is what we are keep on hearing since 10 10 15 years global uh, global warming changing of climate etc yeah climate change is real at the same time only human cannot really stop the climate change okay it's so logical that we are part of nature and uh, uh it's it's uh, it, it is uh, you know unachievable to say that uh, we protect earth we are part and part parcel of the earth and we are evolving species at the same time we are so dependent with nature but we can't really you know protect the nature but we can actually reduce the damage that we cause intentional damage to the nature and environment but we can't really stop the entire pollution or we have to find out the uh, a lot of alternatives and you and people uh, which which has uh, you know uh, ability you know which you have the thorough uh, inputs you know from different corners of the world and you can really use that inputs and you can come up with some innovations to really um, you know put this uh, into a perspective so in our school i know Uh, we actually started uh, six groups, six innovations. In that uh, NAT Tech, uh, we have one of the NAT Tech and Sci-Fi Titans. You know, we have got different groups where we actually, uh, you know, talk about these, uh, you know, innovations, right? And uh, we have, uh, you know, when when it comes to technology is involved again to really produce something innovative. Again, technology is involved, and the technology when the technology is involved, industries are involved. when industries are involved obviously the pollutants are involved but we have to 
pick a better and uh, more uh, sustainable at the same time more you know eco friendly or uh, eco friendly approaches right so when we talk about the global warming or greenhouse effects we need to more focus on uh, what exactly is a greenhouse you know effect it is nothing but a natural phenomena that causes heating of earth surface and the atmosphere so these rays would come and they bombard and then they leave few rays would leave back and then again they will be trapped in the atmosphere which increases the temperature so without greenhouse effect the average temperature at earth surface would have been at only uh, it is around uh, minus uh, 18 degrees centigrade right so what what's actually happening actually what, what exactly this greenhouse effect and global warming do affect the environment right so when we talk about this uh, you know uh, you know these greenhouse gases radiate heat energy right it comes to the earth surface heating it up again so actually it's it's you know reflecting because of the pollutants or the you know the you know the clouds and gases reflect almost one fourth of the incoming solar radiation, right? And a few of uh, some some part of it would be even absorbed, right? But half of it will be falling on the earth surface and which will be heating up, right? And then which is um, the small portion will be reflected back. So what happens is this earth surface will re-emit heat as an infrared radiation right but apart from it is absorbed by natural you know at, at absorbed by atmospheric gases like uh, you know methane and uh, you have got carbon dioxide so when this pollutant co2 is more in the air uh, what happens is this will be absorbed this uh, you know this uh, you know uh, this heat energy will be absorbed right by this atmospheric gases and they cannot really escape into the space. So what happens? These greenhouse gases again uh, radiate the heat energy. So it again comes back to the earth surface, heating it up it again. So in this way, in a cyclic manner, without its being escaped to the space, it is actually coming back to the earth surface and is it's increasing its you know temperature day by day. So that's what we call it as global warming. So during past century, the atmosphere, uh, the temperature of Earth has been increased almost 0 0.6 degrees centigrade, right? Most of which, which is uh, 30 years, like almost uh, 30, uh, three decades, uh, this uh, change in, uh, you know, uh, this Earth uh, temperature is absorbed, it's been absorbed, right? So here we need to focus on uh, what are the actually uh, gases which are contributing to this global warming, for example, CO2, meat, and CFCs and N2O, and their percentage is also important. And uh, most highest uh, is CO2, 60 percent. So, how do this uh, uh, impact will be there uh, on the environment? So, global warming impact would change, you know, will be as in climate changes, right? Many people, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, the sad part is that uh, the persons who are in uh, highest positions, right, even they are not ready to accept that there is climate change. Climate change is real, but at the same time, human alone can really cannot uh, stop that. Okay, we are part of nature, I'm telling again and again, because, you know, uh, it's an, uh, I call it as disassociation, right, dissociation from the reality. We are not ready to accept that uh, you know the, that we we take we want to take control. So even what we do is we further we damage the environment by taking the entire control. But nature fixes its you know this all these things. But we at at one point of the uh, uh, one point of this uh, nature fixing its own thing, right? We have to actually adapt to certain changes. Does the nature you know? Uh, nature does right by itself so if you are if suddenly the temperature is increased suddenly the temperature is decreased right suddenly one one type of gas is increased more one type of gas is decreased so at that point of time we, whether if you are fit for that particular environment and if you are able to adapt to certain environment we live 
and we evolve. Otherwise, as just like dinosaurs, we will be also, uh, you know, extinct at one, uh, very soon, right? So this is how the climate change will have, will have an impact on uh, every other organism, right? <clears throat> so especially the coastal areas would be submerged if the global warming is still controlled. Uh, you know, this uh, is, if it is keep on occurring, the coastal areas will be fully submerged because this is one of the uh, important, uh, you know, one of the uh, impact that this uh, Himalayan uh, snow caps are melting down and then the sea level would be raised and this coastal areas would be submerged. So, yeah, so we are, we came to the end of this lesson, almost just five, 10 minutes for that. So, okay, the next aspect is, yeah, ozone layer depletion, right, in the stratosphere. So this uh, ozone layer depression, like um, how does this, what is the constitution of ozone layer, right? Right, uh, if you see this UV rays, you know, the UV rays which are falling on the earth would be protected, you know, which, you know, which actually, you know, acts on this molecular oxygen causing the produ production of ozone, right? Actually, what happens is there, there is a balance between the formation of ozone to oxygen to oxygen to ozone, but but this balance got disrupted due to the ozone layer depletion or degradation by CFCs that we use in uh, what you say different varieties of electronic appliances, home appliances. So that uh, uh, the ozone hole at the um, uh, um, uh, Antarctic uh, region we find this ozone hole. Right, so now report says that the ozone hole is healed almost because the movement of the entire human population on the earth is limited. So the uh, the pollutants which are releasing from the and uh, you know uh, automobiles and other industries are limited, so that the ozone layer uh, got healed, uh, the ozone hole got healed, but that's that's temporary, right? Yeah, so that we come across the different uh, agreements at this uh, at international level, like Montreal Protocol, which actually talks about you know how to control the emission of uh, you know ozone uh, uh, depleting substances. So that's what they form association. They form uh, you know uh, uh, treaties for for that matter. So they all the dignitaries right from different countries uh, would come. Delegates would come and the environmentalists they'll come and discuss and they formulate certain strategies to really control the emission of this ozone depleting substances. Right? That's how we control the ozone layer, uh, you know, ozone hole. Right? Taking uh, necessary steps. So coming to the last aspect, that is uh, uh, degradation by improper resource utilization and maintenance. So, uh, if you see the nature has given n number of resources for that, for a, for human as well as other and other animals. But when 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 we when we come to the utilization and maintenance of them, we we, we don't do a proper uh, utilization of these resources. So what we go what we do is we in, we improperly handle the resources, right? So we cut down the entire deforestation. Now, right now, uh, one of the hot topic is that AB. In Andhra Pradesh, uh, there was a news going on that there is a mangrove conserving, uh, you know, soils of the mangroves, uh, which actually area is there, right? That particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, mangroves uh, area is there. That actually they have, they wanted to uh, use it for building some households. So it is a move from the government, AP Andhra Pradesh government, and it's not welcoming for any person, especially who understand the environmental degradation. So this is a right now uh, update, right? So this is something intentional damage that we are doing it, right? So we for the building of the you know buildings and households, this is not the right approach. That what is my opinion 
because uh, any environmentalist would agree with me uh, because it definitely hampers the ecosystem right so at the same time it promotes so you know uh, removal of this uh, you know mangroves uh, areas would even uh, promote the soil erosion etc right so deforestation is one of the damage that we uh, do for uh, right the, the forests or lungs right lungs of the nature and we always do deforestation and there are other uh, uh, aspects uh, that we go counteract this deforestation that is uh, chikpo movement is there where uh, you know uh, local women participated in this chikpo movement to protect the trees from the axe so they they literally hug the trees so that if we have to cut down the trees we, you have to pass us so this is a slogan they have come up with that is uh, a chipko movement which is a, a very uh, you know a very famous movement which actually stopped this uh, you know deforestation at that point of time 1980 uh, on 1974s bishnoi movement one one of the other bishnoi movement which is people led people led uh, you know what is a uh, movements these are people led uh, movements not government initiatives but people led movements so uh, bishnoi movement is one of the movement is seen in 1731 right uh, you know the king of the uh, jodhpur in rajasthan asked to arrange wood for constructing a new palace so that this minister and the workers went to forest uh, forest near a village you know uh, inhabited by bishnois so this bishnoi movement is something which is uh, you know started up by this bishnois right so this bishnoi women right uh, you know hug the tree right so when they try to cut down right so even uh, they, in this way there all these uh, you know other other uh, bishnois around uh, along with uh, her daughters and other uh, other people also joined this and they started hugging right where uh, uh, during this uh, saving process even these bishnois and uh, several uh, her daughters and even several bishnois also lost their lives so later what happened is the government of india has instituted the uh, amrita devi bishnoi wildlife protection award right for individuals or communities from rural areas for extraordinary courage and dedication to protecting wildlife so here india uh, when it comes to government also first as an individual you know we have to come and we have to even uh, uh, we have to uh, you know come out of our own comfort zone and we have to even uh, not only talk raise awareness and we even we have to stop something this sort of things right so especially and then uh, government of has to play a major role uh, to support this kind of a movements right so with this uh, we completed this lesson right so far what we discussed is uh, right yeah so far what we discussed is the entire environ uh, environmental issues right what are the different types of waste we see in uh, environment and uh, what are the types of pollutions and pollutants and how to control so this is a brief uh, you know uh, you know uh, brief account of this environmental issue chapter 12 uh, sorry chapter uh, 16 of 12th biology so i hope this would be useful uh, uh, for uh, for your preparation for quick recap of this entire lesson right and uh, please do visit uh, uh, on this chapter within a uh, within few days that will be notified so please do subscribe consider do subscribing and share this link uh, as much as possible and like before you leave and thank you for joining this live session hope you uh, uh, hope you enjoyed this session and uh, if you have got doubts you can uh, uh, you can approach me and please do visit uh, um so you can uh, chat here in this website if you have any doubts and please use this uh, material uh, which i have posted in this website that is super six education so uh, super six education as a super six educator i took this initiative to reach uh, n number of students for their preparation during this lockdown 
and to get more benefit and thank you for your participation and please do share this link subscribe and like before you leave thank you stay home stay safe